Growing up in Texas, I was taught to hate communism and mistrust anything to do with Russia. A shadowy empire operating from behind an iron curtain, hell bent on destroying the American way of life. When communism fell, we were all supposed to be relieved. But the paranoia was so ingrained it never truly faded. Today, America has the world on edge with almost a thousand military bases in every corner of the planet. But a new type of Cold War has begun. A war of social media spin and fake news, causing a climate of political chaos, making American citizens turn against one another. My idea was simple. Find a country undoubtedly manipulated by Russia and search for answers in hopes that it could shed light on the current crisis in the States. Finally leaving for Bulgaria tomorrow. My biggest fear, you want to know what my biggest fear is? Nothing's going to happen. Is that nothing happens. That's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is I go there and everybody's like, well, life here is great. Look at it. The weather's great. The food is great. It's not going to be like that. Everything's great. Not. Here we go. While flying overseas, I logged onto the CIA's official YouTube channel and discovered a few fascinating videos produced right before the fall of communism. In recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. If a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a communist publication, he may be a communist. If a person supports organizations which reflect communist teachings, or organizations labeled communist by the Department of Justice, she may be a communist. If a person defends the activities of communist nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a communist. If a person does all these things over a period of time, he must be a communist. But there are other communists who don't show their real faces, who work more silently. Bulgaria, a tiny country located on the border of Turkey and Greece, known for having the world's strongest bacteria used for making yogurt. But regardless of the exceptional bacteria, Bulgaria had also gained the unfortunate reputation for having the worst corruption in the entire European Union. And many believe this was due to the Russian communists in planting a shadow government right before the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s. My mission? Gain the trust of several insiders and attempt to document how Russia manipulates elections, banking, media, and the judicial system. KGB is uh, the organization which made Bulgarian Mafia during the communism and the communistic regime. And uh, for about 30 years, this Mafia was growing and growing and growing and now it's this mafia has government. Day one with my new team. There was Mila, a native-born, proud, patriotic Bulgarian, helping with logistics. Taylor, a young filmmaker who had traveled with me from Los Angeles and was the only other American on the team. My longtime friend Paul Thomas from London, who had been producing documentaries for many years. Jordan, a Bulgarian auditor by trade and activist fighting to end corruption. You are paying customers. They will always find a place for those. Evgeny, a seasoned Bulgarian cameraman with a magic eye. And then there's Pavel, the Bulgarian filmmaker and the joker of the bunch. Taylor's here. That's Taylor. Yeah. That's Taylor. That's, that's, me. that's Milo. That's the driver. That's uh, you're, you're on the front seat. Yeah. 
We needed an inside man, someone not corrupted by the Mafia. Jordan gave us the contact information of an independent journalist named Asen Yordanov, who ran the Bulgarian equivalent of WikiLeaks called Bivol. I just tried to call him back just right now. He didn't pick me up, so I will try him later. Okay. So I'm waiting for his contact. contact. Okay. You is nice. She's beautiful and she can broke every door which is locked because she is smart and she is uh, beautiful and the people love her. <laughs> yeah. Even though we had not heard back from the journalist, we hit the road in hopes of getting our investigation started. In the very beginning it was, of course, it was very strange for me because this is a group of new people that I have never met. I know the cultural differences are very big between Americans and Eastern European people. My first impression of driving through the country reminded me of the 1984 Patrick Swayze movie Red Dawn, in which small town America becomes occupied by Russian forces and Russian culture. I wanted to help on a project that I don't know, I didn't know what will be at the end, but I saw the people want to help us. Here in the once occupied country, you could easily see the seams between the ancient European architecture and the crappy cement and steel buildings left behind by the Soviet Union. It was easy to tell that this place must have looked totally different before the 45 years of Russian occupation. After driving for several hours, we stopped for gas, where I learned that Russia supplies almost all the fuel for the European Union through Gazprom and Luke Oil. In a recent internet data dump known as the Paradise Papers, it was discovered that back in 2011, Gazprom, working through the Russian state bank VTB, purchased a 5% stake in Twitter and invested a billion dollars in Facebook. We were finally able to track down the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Asen Yordanov, who told me that he lived in constant fear due to several of his investigations creating damage to the shadowy figures pulling the strings from behind a new type of iron curtain. Asen, you know, Asen is a difficult man, you know, he's set in his ways and uh, he's a very focused man. Sometimes, you know, he doesn't accept any other authority. The idea sometimes working in a team is difficult for him because he's kind of a lone wolf. And I could really understand him at times because he has been doing what he's doing, you know, exposing corruption through his side bevel for five years. And he has been receiving limited or no help and he has been constantly attacked through various, through various ways by the system. In the Black Sea port of Burgas, Asen showed us a huge oil refinery owned by Russia. And beyond the, uh, uh, the Russian base is the NATO base. Oh. But the Russian base is better situated than, than the NATO base. That's crazy. So this is a very good example of the dependence of Bulgaria from uh, Russia. So you have a NATO state. Bulgaria is a member of NATO. But you, you have a territory ex ex which is excluded from the control of the country and this is very strategic territory. He's a he's a proven criminal. So, Kevin, what do you think? One of my objects, That's very crazy. smuggler of cigarettes, yeah. is a prime minister of my country. The other one, the smuggler, proven smuggler, criminal of powder milk from Russia, yes. educated in Russia, graduated in Moscow, is the mayor of my city. Okay. What am I? What am I doing here? What's the sense of my work? What's the sense of my life? What's the sense of our efforts and our sacrifices? What's the sense? What's the result? That, the, that Bulgaria is ruling by mafias, by, by bandits, by, by, by criminals. Asen drove us down the Black Sea Peninsula, 
a highly valuable parcel of land somehow owned by Russia inside the country of Bulgaria. We're in front of uh, one new built palace uh, which uh, by documents is a, a sport base but you could see what kind of sport base is that. It's a palace uh, a kind of sarai it's a Turkish Turkish name of palace uh, which is connected with uh, the party with the Turkish party of Ahmed Dugan and uh, and Dilan Pevsky. With the situation in Syria the bond between Russia and Turkey has become a big concern in the West so when Asen told me that the heads of the Bulgarian Turkish party own the land that Bulgaria illegally gave to Russia I made note of these two shadowy figures named Dugan and Pevsky. Uh, so I don't know how uh, this first was uh, given to Lukoil, to Russians, and after that Russians gave this to the, to the Turkish party of, uh, of Dugan and Pevsky, which is, uh, I suppose it's a scandal. Still in the coastal region, Asen suggested we visit a different type of Russian stronghold, a tourist destination called Sunny Beach, said by many to be the Cancun of Russia and Eastern Europe. People came for the prostitutes, drugs, and cheap counterfeit Russian liquor. No, no, I mean, rich people would not come here. It's considered for people from the, from the countryside coming to, to Sunny Beach like a big thing. It's rumored that the Sunny Beach policeman's main job is to make sure tourists don't die from the overconsumption of discount drugs, alcohol, or the sex. Canada going fucking crazy, man! Woo! I know, I know, I know. Yeah. You, can, you can never do this in Norway. Yeah, I know, right? It's so expensive yeah. over there, huh? I remember a, a bottle of you know, vodka and a of fortune. About... Welcome! Why are you here to party? Uh, in the Netherlands we heard that it's always a good party here. Yeah. Yeah, so we came here to party. Take a shot with Sambuka. I see you, you should do. Yes, you should do it. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. The next day I woke to a kind of rubbing alcohol radiator fluid taste in my mouth. The booze may have been counterfeit, but my headache was 100% authentic. During the Soviet occupation, Sunny Beach was considered a five-star exclusive resort, a dream destination for only the wealthiest Russians and Bulgarians. Bulgaria was built for the carefree holiday. But when communism fell, the Russian-backed mafia gobbled up all the real estate on the coast using unlegislated privatization deals. I wanted to learn more about the significance of the Russian Mafia controlling the coast, so we met back up with the Sen. The Mafia transformed uh, this very gorgeous bay and this very beautiful uh, port uh, in, uh, in a, in a touristic ghetto. Now tell me in English why Americans should care about what's going on here. Bulgaria is a Trojan horse of Russia in uh, uh, European Union in North Atlantic uh, structures. Hi, good. I'm, I'm with Hello. Kevin. Good morning. I'm Paul. Good morning. And you can't get the train across the Starting to feel a little like Chevy Chase making Eastern European vacation, I was having too much fun. But it was time to get the team, including myself, into a more disciplined mode. Asen's comment about Russia being a Trojan horse inside the EU made me realize I needed to learn more about how Russia gained its control over this once sovereign nation. 
And as with most stories about 20th century history, I discovered that Hitler played a major factor. But I need to learn more about this country's strange history of becoming one of the Soviet satellite states at the end of World War II. Much like Putin got his start by being a KGB agent, the Prime Minister of Bulgaria, Boyko Borisov, got his by being a bodyguard to the communist dictator Tordor Zhivkov, who ruled for over three decades until the fall of the Soviet Empire. But previous to the Russian occupation was a German aristocrat named Simeon Sax Cogburn Gotha. The next day we met up with one of the largest landowners in Bulgaria, now symbolically titled the Tsar. My name is Simeon of Saxe Coburg, King of the Bulgarians and former Prime Minister of, of the Republic of Bulgaria. During the peak of the war, Simeon's father, King Boris III, was visited by Hitler, who ordered him to turn over the 60,000 Jews living in Bulgaria, so far spared from the Nazi death camps. When the king refused, Hitler had him poisoned. As a result of his father's murder, Simeon became the new king of Bulgaria at the age of six years old. My father died when I was six, and the next year, in 43, uh, we had the Soviet army. Uh, liberators, quote unquote, or invaders, according to how you want to read history. At the end of World War II, Russia didn't waste any time in securing the geographically significant country before it could fall into the hands of the Allies. What's a memory you have of, of communism coming? What was, what, what, what was, well, it's, um, what was the change? The first thing was that uh, immediately after the coup on September 9th, a few days later, the three new regions arrived. They came with a truckload of, of armed uh, partisans uh, wearing all sorts of weapons. All these people who had been around me were executed and the chief regent of the new uh, regime came in this room and actually sitting there uh, to convey to my mother and me uh, his sympathy for the executions. Well, who, okay, so when you say all the people around me were executed, who, who... Well, about, uh, there were close to, a oh, little over 200 who were executed in one night. After a, All around after, you mean like your cabinet, like your political... Well, yes, a lot of ministers, a lot of members of parliament, people who worked here in the palace, plus my uncle who was the regent, and the two other regents, a uh, university professor and a general. And why were you spared? I mean, and then, so you were spared Well, I was spared, I think, because it really would have looked a bit too much to the Western allies that uh, the Soviets would uh, execute or whatever a seven-year-old child. Some of the people I've talked to, I mean, maybe you might consider it this conspiracy theory, I, I'm not sure, that have told me that when Russia left, like through the KGB and or other organizations, left a lot of kind of a mafia in, in Bulgaria that went on to uh, infiltrate the government. Wouldn't you do the same thing when you're changing the regime and withdrawing? Wouldn't you leave some of your uh, people or um, yeah, systems, you know. <laughs> so yeah. you must take things as they come and as they are, and again, not generalize. Now our directors. Yes, yes, that's correct. After the interview, Jordan was able to get a few minutes with the former king to express the frustrations he lives with every day. No, I can, I can tell you my story. I'm going, you know, uh, I'm, still, I'm working for an American company. I work for General Electric as an internal worker. I have traveled the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going from, from the Netherlands to Italy to, to do an audit mm -hmm. for the company we worked for. I'm seeing you know, this manager, I give him my card, I say, we're doing the audit, this kind of stuff. He looks, ah, you see, funny, uh, funny accent, where do you come from? I said, Bulgarian. Ah, my cleaner is Bulgarian. <laughs> so, so you see what is the... The Bulgarian plumber. Yeah, it, it, and, it, and it hurts. Oh, gee, look at this dog. I came here in search of the big red boogeyman. So when the Tsar openly admitted that the KGB had rightfully left people and systems behind after the collapse, it made me realize that it was time for me to get beyond my Western thinking.
Perhaps understanding the virtues of old communism could help me grasp the current political climate back in the States. So the team suggested that I talk to an old architect made famous for his massive Soviet monuments. Communism, communism is communism is communism is 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 Трябва да изгради материалната база, промишленост, производителни сили, култура и прочее, и прочее. Така започна строителството на социализма. И той продължи 45 години. През това време, аз ви казах... Everywhere you look, you see endless rows of old Russian-style tenement buildings. They litter the landscape. This place must have been gorgeous before they built all these places. But all aesthetics aside, there are people living in these buildings, so tearing them down would never be an option. We stopped by the Buzlaja monument that Georgi Stoilov had designed. It was like a giant Russian flying saucer out of an 80s style future, now abandoned and sealed off. Wow, this feels like we really shouldn't be here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this thing shouldn't be here, so... Okay. Watch your head, Mila, there are harsh sticks. There are really dangerous sticks above. So, it's we go up. Holy shit. Up, up, look up. So this maybe has something to do with like the, the space race a little bit? Maybe? Yeah, a little bit like, you know, projecting communism as being extremely advanced in terms of technology, in terms of uh, science, in terms of in human development. Because it's a national monument. Even if it's a communist monument, it's a national monument. It's a very old building uh, that can destroy any moment. And we just get in. And you could see the pieces of the wall that are falling down and you could see the dust and it was it was scary in there. It's notable that the first human in space was Russian astronaut Yuri Gagarin. Asen introduced me to an investigator named Zahari Tomov who was hired by an American company to track down stolen funds. Zahari declined an on-camera interview but told me that Russia often uses the names of fallen heroes for companies and entities left in place for back-channel purposes. In this case, a Bulgarian tobacco company named Yuri Gagarin, after the astronaut, was reportedly linked to the Russian VTB Bank. Founded in 1963 by Russia, Yuri Gagarin was just one of an endless array of corporate entities and offshore accounts left in place by the Soviets. But in order for all this to run smoothly, the proper people must stay in power. Bulgaria is struggling to supply water and electricity to its 6.8 million citizens. With a voter turnout expected at 50% and allegations of fraud, it looks unlikely that elections will solve Bulgaria's economic woes. Seemingly unbeatable, Prime Minister Boyko Borisov is a controversial frontman of the former Soviet satellite and current NATO member of Bulgaria. Foremost, I want to uh, thank uh, the Prime Minister for uh, the strong partnership uh, in NATO. Asen suggested that we go to a small town called Star Zagora, where Boyko's government was actively bulldozing the homes of the poor and starving Roma people, who ironically voted for him for as little as a sandwich. We met with the young progressive mayor, Zhivko Todorov. I mean, are people using the Roma people as a way to, like, stack votes on a certain party? Some certain parties mm -hmm. uh, use uh, uh, Roma people to get votes. I think this is the, the biggest problem maybe when uh, talking about elections in, in Bulgaria.
Growing up in America, the word gypsy sparked images of mysticism, nomadic fortune tellers. Gypsies, trials and thieves, but even from the people of the town they call it. Across Eastern Europe, there were over 10 million Roma people who, during communism, were forced to plant roots. Ironically, communism was the best thing to ever happen to most of these nomads because it gave them food, shelter, and jobs. When communism fell in 1989, most of these once nomadic people found themselves stuck in a no-win situation. On the outskirts of Stara Zagora was a Roma village called Lazanets. We met up with a Roma man named Tashko, who appeared to be the spokesman for the village. Само да имат желание. Защото значи те широмети не са на работа, защото нямат образование. Пък образованието е много важно нещо. Manipulating the poor is something that happens in all countries. But these Roma people were like refugees of the Cold War. So in hopes of helping our investigation, I wanted to dig deeper. Some of the you know the gypsies you talk to they they claim that they do that they do pay for their water they do pay for their electricity that they do have the right to have their land there is that all um, is that all just talk is none of that's real or this is another question some politician helped them maybe before the elections to to get um, these wow. um, right right I get it these things so um, so they'll all vote for him yes yeah and, and then uh, once, this he, is once the, he gets the an office problem. yes and then once he gets an office he's like, yes, and uh, of course uh, some mayors uh, just uh, close their eyes for uh, the illegal construction because uh, um, they were voting for, for them maybe. Tashko's daughter Tani was only 12 years old, but for Roma people, getting married and having babies usually starts at age 14. Kevin always saying like, show me the worst part of Bulgaria, show me the ugliest things. And I was okay, wow, we have such much, so much beautiful nature and buildings and ancient, ancient uh, architectures and history and everything. Why don't you want me to show you something beautiful? And then he said, you know, it's very easy to, fit, to see the beautiful. It's hard to, to find out the, the ugly parts. As a journalist, I know you're not supposed to get personally involved. But when the Roma people invited us to dinner, how could we refuse? Do you learn any English today? She learn any English? Is she on the phrase? Tani, what, what color is this? Pink. All right. Woo! The majority of young Roma girls are sold by their parents at the local brides mart, where there is a very good chance they would end up victims of the massive human trafficking networks orchestrated by the Russian Mafia. Maybe if we could keep one child from becoming a sex slave, it would bring us good luck for our investigation. The next day we hired a private tutor, but when she discovered that Tani was Roma, she suddenly declined. What do you mean? You are a teacher of Tony and you just want to speak about how the lessons are going on and such things. Mm -hmm. She said, no, 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 I don't want to be part of it. 
I soon learned that the racism here was harshly focused on the Roma, who ironically suffered the worst from the collapse of communism. This is what we call an impromptu English lesson in Stars Agora. This animal makes the sound. Like. What animal is this? Um, elephant? Yes! yes. yes. Good! We had to keep moving with our investigation, but before we left, we decided to help Tani with a few items that could help her in school. And now the daily casual set atop with the 20 jeans is a gap pod nevnata. Wow! Wow! That's yeah, so cute! Where's Paul? I mean, this story, Tani's such a magical little creature. She's yeah. so sweet and so smart. And she represents everything good. And the fact that that tutor wouldn't teach her, yeah. it's just like gross. It, it speaks to the mental just uh, conflict in this area. Yeah. Like, it's a really great story. It's crazy racism. So glad to return to our quiet hotel in Sofia, we were surprised to learn it was a location of non-stop high school graduation parties going on for an entire week. Hot cars, clothes, rivers of booze, and lots of young faces with seemingly bright futures. The contrast between these young adults and the ones we had left back at the Roma village couldn't have been any greater. Bulgaria is one of the few countries in the entire world with a shrinking population. Are you going to stay here after you graduate? No. So why are like, you leaving? There is no future in Bulgaria. Like, everything, like, this country is filled with hate and, like, no tolerance at all. So, I'm probably, I'm like, I'm definitely, like, when I was graduating, they asked me, like, what do you want to do? So, like, I never, like, staying in Bulgaria to study was never an option. Yeah. I just, I just had to leave. I know that I have to leave. We are we experiencing as a country the biggest brain drain in our living history. So about 20 something percent of young people graduating, they go to study abroad, to emigrate. And, then, and they don't wish to come back. And you know, those who go to, to study abroad, this is you know, usually the highly motivated, the, I wouldn't say the best and the brightest, but a very high percentage of their high achievers. A very few percentage of those is planning to come back. With the brightest young adults forced to leave the country, and the poorest, least educated being used to rig voting, I wanted to see if I could discover a direct link between the former communist mafia and the election meddling currently happening here and back home. Mila suggested we meet a young Western thinking politician who agreed to participate in our film in hopes that it would expose his country's corruption to a Western audience. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Аз съм преподавател в Технически университет в София. От повече от 10 години занимавам се с висше образование от 97-та година. In 2013, Avilo ran for prime minister against Boyko Borisov. But according to several experts, there was proof that Avilo got 9% of the vote. 
So when Boyko won in an overwhelming landslide, it became obvious that there was other forces at work. The Bulgarian authorities found 350,000 illegally printed ballots in a printing house near Sofia. Innovation предприемачество и общото съдържи погребена на всички новости, които касаят малите хора. И разбира се развитие на економиката. The next day, Ivailo called the head members of his Nova Bulgaria party in preparation for his bid to run for mayor of a small town. After losing so hard to Boyko, maybe this was a little more realistic. Никога и на никаква цена няма да си позволя да излъжа, да манипулирам. При мен, е, при мен е голия популизъм, който съм виждал последните 25 години, брутално ме е отвратил от всичко, което участвам. Това, което ме промени всъщност... A few days later, I received a brutal voicemail from a man who had backed a Vilo, based upon his promise to bring honest Western thinking into Bulgarian politics. According to Avilo's Western backer, Avilo had gone against the principles of the Nova Bulgaria party by making a sudden coalition with a former communist party called Vimero. Soon after this announcement, a scandalous video surfaced of Vimero members beating a bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses. The local press accused the former communists of being white nationalists. With the nationwide election only days away, we headed to the tiny farming town on the outskirts of Sofia called Olympolin. Okay, so then what made him decide Olympolin? Причините, че се спряхме на град Елимпелин са няколко. Първата е, че в Елимпелин има един уникален проект, който е международен от световна величина, 500 работни места, с възможност всичко, което се произвежда за този парк да се произвежда в общината. The election is Sunday? Uh, okay. Is there any sense right now of like polling of like where they are in the polls and where you are in the polls or like in polls? They're putting you in seventh place right now. So there's how many people are running? Seven? <laughs> uh, he nice candidate. Eleven candidates and he's seven right now. Yes. So what's wow, okay, well. What are you gonna do? You better, you better like I'm going to win. You better pull a rabbit I'm out of a hat. Win. You're gonna win? How? Learning that billions of dollars were coming from foreign investors made it clear why the former Communist Party of Vimero would be so interested in a place like Olympolin. Yeah, well, generally, when people are speaking about political uh, formation, organizations, they are thinking that in these political parties, there are a lot of money that can be used for, even sometimes for personal issues. And they could become rich or somewhere, something like that. From another point, there are a lot of people that are thinking that you're, when you're from America and you came to Bulgaria and you're American and you want to make something, it means you're very rich. Maybe in some way how Tony Toshko are thinking about you like a golden chicken that is giving them money. <laughs> a golden chicken. And computers. <laughs> Mila, are you excited about voting? No. Today you get a choice. Before heading into one of the municipalities, I decided to check out some of the other political candidates. It was discovered in the Paradise Papers data dump that Russia exerts localized control working through each individual municipality. In Bulgaria, there were 256 mayors, many acting as a kind of field lieutenant, a man or woman living amongst the people. So, my section is this one. The section that you need to go to, to vote. Oh, 
I think to go and buy sock, socks. <laughs> My left one is falling down. <laughs> That night, we went to the National Palace of Culture to witness the election returns. From behind a barrier, we stood with a handful of freezing citizens watching a giant TV screen guarded by police as if we might attack the TV if outraged by the results. Soon the returns of the race for mayor were announced, and to our amazement, Avilo had overcome the incredible odds by beating Boyko's ruling party. Was this similar to the Russian-style meddling happening back in America? Or was Avilo just an average man doing whatever required to win? Do you believe he joined the dark side to win by joining the VMRO? I could say that uh, this party of VMRO, uh, it, it, it changed uh, uh, partners, it changes its, its views. It was mastered by this uh, repressive uh, secret services of ex-communist regime. A few days later, we went to visit Avilo in his new digs as the mayor of Olympolin. We were just in time for the decision on how to deal with the local Roma people. Now the election was over. Okay. Let's go inside. Те много мощен. Той има много манипулативни инструменти, с които психата на хората контролира средата и затова всяка една стъпка, която е по посока на промяната, винаги среща много сериозна посока на промяната, винаги. Коалиция на национално ниво с ВМРО. Ръководителя на ВМРО е нещо, което аз, това е човек, който дори не познавам. Насякъде в страната, в... не може да кажеш, че всички в тази организация са бивши комунисти. After accusing Avilo of being a communist, I realized this had little to do with political ideology and everything to do with money and control. When I Google Bulgaria, the most significant thing that pops up is the fact that only a few years ago, in 2013, they had an insane protest. It was like their own Bulgarian spring. What happened? I decided to meet with a young man named Avilo Denev and his two close counterparts, who I was told led many of the 2013 protests. Казвам се Ивайл Денев. Наскоро завърших Софийския университет и съм част от традиция студентски протести и граждански протести от 4 години насам. Включително During the big protest, Avila led thousands of students who blocked the members of parliament in their building for over five hours. However, the final result of all this was that he and the other protesters had a major falling out and a parting of the ways. Всячески медии се опитваха да ни изпокарат, хора на правителството и на държавата се опитваха да ни изпокарат и да, в общи линии имаше сега в момента. With all this corruption and outside influences, I wondered why the media wasn't doing anything to expose it all. One particular politician, uh, Pevsky, was like um, a metaphor of the whole system. Because of its size, because of its youngness, because of its, its um, arrogance, let's say, all those images were inside of this person. Pevsky and his mother began in 2007 buying all the media, press and electronic in the country. When communism fell, Bulgaria became a free-for-all for rich, connected oligarchs buying up and privatizing everything of value that should belong to the state. And these channels are supplying uh, Bulgarian and Russian 
ex-communist circles with uh, fresh money. In 2013, with no experience and no qualifications, Dilan Pevsky was suddenly appointed chief of Bulgaria's national security agency, DANS, by none other than his own mother. I discovered a report titled Media Oligarchs Go Shopping, listing Dilan Pevsky as one of the world's 12 top media oligarchs. Part of a consolidated, shrinking network of ownership that only serves the political, financial interests of its owners. All basically using the same methods. starting to become clearer that although Bulgaria was a tiny place halfway around the world, it was a perfect microcosm for things happening in the West. The next day a new report named Bulgaria as being the most corrupt country inside the European Union. Fed up with the worsening corruption inside the government, an independent group of lawyers and progressive professionals calling themselves the Protest Network organized a conference to decide how to rid their country of the Mafia. The guest of honor was an outsider named Monica McAvey, a famous Romanian prosecutor who had quietly worked her way up the ranks inside the corrupt government of Romania. But when the time was right, she was able to put dozens of rich, powerful officials behind bars for looting the country. What I will tell you, uh, how I did things, uh, how we did things in Romania, uh, in prosecutors, in judges, uh, it really involved uh, Bulgaria. Monica also had active indictments on over a thousand more suspected officials. So what's the difference between the corruption in Romania versus the corruption that's going on here in Bulgaria? I don't think it's a difference. I think in the post-communist countries we have corruption due to the transition from state-owned market, from uh, dictatorship to democracy to free market. Mm -hmm. I think the first privatizations were done without any legislation I see. and no one knew how to do it. Why don't I hear people saying the name Boyka or Pesky in these meetings? Our goal is to be Monica was obviously putting her life in danger by coming to Bulgaria. She was very hesitant to allow me to interview her, but agreed when we offered to drive her directly back to the airport. Uh, are we taking some back route? Bumpy road. <laughs> Is this like some other route to the airport? Kevin, it's a good route. This okay. is the best route right now. Just okay. keep interviewing. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Our cameras are going all over the place. <laughs> um, you are kidnapping me. I know, that's all I was just thinking. I was just like, what is she thinking? Like, are taking you? some weird road. <laughs> and I know, you? like, suddenly, like, this is no way to Anyone the can pretend it's uh... a. <laughs> <Or> just like. <laughs> is there any indication that anything that's going on here goes all the way up the ladder to Putin? Putin and the Soviet Union is, and the Russian Federation is making plans for the next hundreds of years and yeah. just in doing this after they're not a big empire uh, any longer they started to make plans to become again. The Russian Federation is encouraging corruption. Really? Because it's easy to take control over a corrupt right. state. Monica's statement about Russia wanting corrupted states reminded me of an old sitcom I grew up watching called Get Smart, where the Russian KGB was called Chaos. Because if Russia is responsible for creating chaos today back in the States, I would have to admit they are succeeding brilliantly. Is, there, is it likely that there's people in this room working for, for Pepsi or Monica? No. No? Oh, 
Right after I asked if anyone believed that there could be a spy in the room, a very strange woman started accusing Monica of being a phony. Why do you cannot say a president when you are very, very useful, very successful? Why? Why you don't stay president? Why you don't stay president? Why you don't stay president? Yeah. No, you Later that day, she appeared all over the Pevsky-owned media with an alternate version of the conference, calling Monica McAvey a pathetic fraud. Why you don't stay president? It seemed like she had friends in high places. But I had an idea. The next day we contacted the Pevsky TV station and told them an American journalist working on a cultural travel show wanted to talk about how great Bulgaria was. My plan was simple. Wait until I was on live TV so I couldn't be censored, and then defend Monica McAvey against all the distortions being made by the mafia-owned media. She said there's been a total of uh, 44 politicians jailed. If I could trick the Pevsky censorship machine, perhaps it would inspire others to do the same. Hi. Hi, how's it going? How you doing? Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Kevin. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. What is that? He's saying that she said some nonsense in the in, in this one interview. So he's like, cut it. Yeah. Okay. He's trying to attack her. Okay. Okay. But like, oh, that's cool. So much is beyond the touch of the picture of the situation. As soon as the live show started, I realized my plan had one fatal flaw. I didn't speak the local language and had no way of knowing what was being said. That's it. That's funny. Left out in the dust. I'll never know if my translation device was purposely not working. But if I ever get another chance to appear on Bulgarian TV, I'll use a device not owned by Pevsky. <laughs> yeah. By the spring of 2014, it's estimated that Pevsky and his mother had borrowed hundreds of millions of dollars, buying up over 85% of all the country's media. The bulk of this debt was to a bank known as the CCB, Corporate Commercial Bank of Bulgaria, the bank's main shareholders, Vatan Vasilov, had become suspicious of the Pevskys and suddenly demanded full payment. So Pevsky became a kind of oligarch, very influential uh, guy, with the money of Cooperative Commercial Bank and with the help of Vatan Vasilov. It was at this time that Pevsky unleashed his Bulgarian media machine on Zvatan and his family by publicly accusing the banker of attempting to murder him causing total panic and a run on the bank that caused it to close. This country lost 10% uh, of the G GDP of the country and 30% uh, of the middle class were liquidated, literally. So, did you personally lose money yes. on this deal? Yes. Can I ask you exactly how much did you lose? Mm, this is a big seven-figure number. When the CC Bank collapsed, an American company called Air Logistics, based in Dallas, Texas, also lost $65 million. Under the watch of the Bulgarian National Bank CCB conservators, an American asset of $65 million grew legs and walked away to the detriment of the U.S. company and to the detriment of the U.S. bankruptcy proceeding creditors. The money had been deposited into the Bulgarian bank after the sale of a local real estate investment north of Sunny Beach. The taking of the 65 million orchestrated by Payevsky to pay off five company debts, which related to call options that were being controlled through the Russian BTB bank. Господин Певски, докъде ще стигне войната между вас и Цветан Василов? Аз вече почвам да съжалявам, че моята охрана подаде сигнали. Може би трябваше да бъда убит и всички ще са доволни. Trying to get one of these shadowy figures to talk on film was never going to happen. However, 
Due to Svetan Vasilov's vulnerable situation, it could be in his best interest to talk. We contacted an anonymous insider and hope to hear back from Zatan with bated breath. In the meantime, while investigating Pevsky's bank records, the team discovered two huge homes side by side, camouflaged by a much poorer area. We all, we're gonna shoot the, what happened on the monitor, because if they shoot the monitor, if they, they shoot the drone, we have to on professional nah, nah. reserve. Yeah, yeah. Where Pevsky is live. He lives here. So, we will try to go on this way and to move close, but all of these streets are with a lot of cameras. Look the Google shot and look this guy, how he see the car from mm -hmm. below. <laughs> and he goes to say, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> it's very strange because they close the street with the barrier. Ah, yeah. So, wow. these two houses belongs to him, belongs to uh, his mother. Yeah, somewhere here to the right. On the right, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah, I, I think this know. one, this one, I think. Okay. Okay, you're good, you're good. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay? Well, okay. From security, they, they could still block us. If a car stops, they cry. In front of us, we're... Yeah, yeah. we're stopped, yeah. We're, we're blocked. Okay, maybe we can take this risk, huh? This is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We're standing out close to this place, next to Pepsi's house. We're launching the drone. Um, this is our third attempt at uh, trying to fly over Pepsi's house. Can you see the house? Yeah, this is the street, and on the left and the right, the building. You know, we have no idea what the reaction would be. There's been a lot of uh, tension about doing this, a lot of warnings. You wouldn't really guess what we're doing. We're kind of just like standing here. It doesn't really look like we're flying a drone. We're just kind of standing here in the bushes with cameras, um, posing as just tourists. People say that Pevsky is the Al Capone of Bulgaria. According to our researchers, these two massive homes belong to Pevsky and his mother, kind of the ultimate mother-in-law plan. But because of all their scandals, they were able to alter the official tax records in order to make it look as if they do not own any such properties inside Bulgaria. If we could get an actual glimpse of one of the Pevskys inside one of these homes, it would be a massive scandal. This could be somebody. This car behind me. Trying to get any dirt on these shadowy figures was proving to be harder than I anticipated. So it was time to change our tactics. Hey, these things happen, right? We still might got hurt. While Zvetan Vasilov remained the most wanted man in Bulgaria, we had one thing the entire media machine of the country didn't. A journalist not working for Pevsky. So I don't really, I don't know you that well, but you know, a little, a little American style gift. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is the kind of thing you oh, like or not. Thank you very much. Yeah? Uh oh. 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 <laughs> I don't know, I mean, if you, you know, I don't know if you drink thank or you not. Thank you very much. Like dick? All right. Thank this is a company registered in Liechtenstein. Company registration in Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein, yes, with uh, 65 million of euro. Okay. With this document, if we, it, if you have uh, independent prosecution, mm -hmm. you could accuse Irena Krstiva in, in in money laundering. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. At least. Yeah. Accusing Pepsi's mother. And, and Pevsky, yes, of course. Accusing them of money. Yes, of course. Is, but, uh, but this is also accusing Zvetan of the same thing, though, right? No, Zvetan is a banker. Knowing he would never get a fair trial in Bulgaria, Zvetan and his family did the only thing they could do to protect their lives. They fled the country. At the same time, an angry mob who had lost their money in the sudden bank run 
gathered in front of the failed bank, complete with an amazingly accurate Svetan Vasilov lookalike. I couldn't help but wonder if the Pevsky machine was behind this perfectly staged demonstration. The team met up to watch coverage of Svetan's extradition trial happening in Serbia. There he is. A few seconds after it was announced that the Serbian government would protect Svetan against Pevsky, Asen received an encrypted message containing a secret rendezvous location of Bulgaria's most wanted fugitive. So we hit the road in hopes of meeting the one man who truly understood the cost of Russian style manipulation. What's the Serbian national anthem thing? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. You guys don't know the Serbian national anthem? No. None of you? No. What do you know about Serbia? Ah, with the, um, the, the tra traditional the meat. Traditional meat? Pleskavica. It's That's like uh, cut it pieces of uh, meat, looking like a huge kufte. Looking like a huge what? Kufte. <laughs> What's that? You know the ones that we ate from the parsley? Like a pastry? Yeah. If uh, Zvetan Vasilov was sitting right here, what would what would you say to him? Why is so a uh, so intelligent or clever businessman had had not the feeling what would happen? He believed too much in himself. We were instructed not to bring any cameras or cell phones to our initial meeting. In the street, we were unexpectedly met by two plainclothes policemen who escorted us into the hotel lobby, where another team of Satan's personal security searched us and ran background checks. We were then led into a very nice Serbian grill restaurant, where we were joined by Svetan and his wife. For the next few hours, we got to know each other, and once Svetan became comfortable, his security gave us instructions to a location where we could conduct our interview. My name is Famous, <laughs> and Svetan Vasilev. Because of how much money his bank had lent, many of Svetan's detractors say they had a hard time believing he wasn't aware of Pevsky's criminal enterprises. He decided it's high time to show himself and to become the king of the country. Uh, by, the way, uh, by the way, his mother uh, was uh, saying very often that uh, her son has a mission to get uh, Bulgaria out of the problems and to save Bulgaria. <laughs> so probably he and she, they decided that the right moment came. How did his mother come upon all this wealth and power? This is uh, uh, probably the, the only uh, only human being uh, who is loving him <laughs> she she um, she's used to be a chief of the state lottery accusing your enemies of attempted murder was kgb 101 <laughs> In 2013, the head of Pevsky's Turkish party, Ahmet Dugan, staged his own assassination, creating a groundswell of support leading to his victory. The man with the fake gun served a very short sentence. So it came as no surprise when Pevsky applied the same winning strategy towards the banker in order to put the final death nail in his Bulgarian coffin. Can you imagine the majority owner of the bank uh, chairman of the supervisory board of the, the murder of, uh, of a member of parliament, powerful member of uh, parliament. Who can trust the bank? Tell me. The governor of the Central Bank made an official interview on TV, media, etc. that uh, the bank, as all the banking system, were very stable and there is nothing to fear. And the same day, the general prosecutor of Bulgaria arrested the uh, chief of the super bank supervision division. So 
it was the hell. What, what kind of personal relationship did you ever have with Pepsi? My personal. Did you ever have a personal relationship? I loved him. <laughs> Pepsi, uh, I trusted that he, he has uh, some positive a positive, um, how to say, characters. That he was very young. That despite the fact uh, that this he's a bad boy, that he can be somehow cultivated. We interviewed Zvatan for over four solid hours, but the only time he gave us specific banking details about Pevsky and the former KGB mafia was during breaks away from our cameras. From an auditor perspective, the head, the auditor speaks to me because uh, I was kind of disappointed because he was he was he was not so generous on the specifics, and he talked about the, uh, on camera, <laughs> off on the record, off the record he talked a lot about the specifics, but on the record he was kind of you know careful. Svetan told us so many schemes it could fill an encyclopedia, but we needed just one lead that we could follow for the film. Uh, Bulgar Tabak uh, and the privatization of Bulgar Tabak is probably the most uh, complicated and politically uh, concerned uh, deal. Asen published several articles about a Bulgarian tobacco company that he claimed once belonged to the people, but now mostly belonged all to Pevsky. <laughs> Why is so politically sensitive? Uh, because most of the population, of Turkish population in Bulgaria, uh, is somehow related to the tobacco industry. They are growing uh, tobacco leaves. Bulgar Tobacco is the Balkan equivalent of the American conglomerate R.J. Reynolds, supplying tobacco for many brands. Brands like Trump Flights, Eva Slims, M&M's, Opal, Select, Rex, Kenton, OK, Stewardess, and Prestige. I told you at the beginning that, uh, that Pevsky was involved in a huge scandal when he, he was blackmailing the uh, acting at that time CEO of uh, uh, Bulgar Tabak, Hristo Vacev. So uh, they had been using uh, Bulgar Tabak to get money. And money was going everywhere. Protecting its own black market trade routes is top priority for the Russian mafia. Грифом made in USSR зачастую было отсеревший и гасло. If I can understand how privatizing something like a tobacco company gives its owning oligarchs the ability to move money and products unimpeded across borders, it would be an amazing glimpse into a mode of doing things that is now happening with America's largest competitor, China. Driving overnight back into Bulgaria, I could feel a sense of relief amongst our Bulgarian crew. Good to be home, yes. But as it turns out, they had serious doubts that we could meet Svetan in Serbia without being tracked by the former Soviet Mafia. I think our, our, our biggest successes is finally trying to get in touch and meeting with this guy, Svetan Vasilev, the exile banker in, in Belgrade. Because, and also the meeting with him was kind of an eye-opener for me. I mean, after, after meeting with him, after hearing the guy talking about all these schemes and corruption, you know, I kind of finally believed it, that it's there, it exists, and the whole country is run, is run by a small mafia type organization, you know, in all the branches of government, how they support each other and how they cover their tracks, and how the whole society is basically sucked dry. The next morning, we arrived at the Bulgar Tobacco headquarters back in Sofia. Well, there are, there are currently accusations that Bulgar Tabak is exporting and uh, smuggling uh, cigarettes into ISIS-held uh, te uh, territory. They smuggle cigarettes to ISIS and to Iraq, and in order for the cigarettes to get smuggled, they pay money to ISIS, and M ISIS is taking a cup. A former CIA acquaintance recommended that we travel into Turkey and meet with a man who had dedicated his life to fighting ISIS. 
if we could connect the dots between the old Soviet trade network's privatized tobacco company and the modern war on terror, it could be huge. Oh. Look at this. We're getting a shot of this. Who would have ever thought in the middle of all these things? I know, who would have ever thought? The equipment we need to spy on them is right here. Kevin, I can show you one picture. <laughs> Apparently, they have a place out in the open. A launch pad. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is awesome. This is almost worth the 4,000 bucks right here. Well, I'd rather it break here. Most Americans, including myself, couldn't point to Bulgaria on a map. But driving from Sofia to Istanbul made me realize its geographical significance. A true crossroads between Europe and the Middle East, Russia, and America. In Istanbul, we met up with Dr. Ahmet Yela, who had infiltrated an ISIS social network while working undercover in Aleppo. But of course, there are spies or agents inside terrorist organizations. And many times, the governments are trying to use or using the terrorist organizations for their sakes, maybe uh, to decrease the power of their opponent country. Posing as an ISIS member inside the network, Ahmet was able to download thousands of execution videos and had one in particular he wanted to show us. Yeah, I mean, the, the, so, cameras, the camera work looks amazing. I mean, yes. it's like, looks better stopping, than our film. Uh, they keep producing and mm -hmm. spreading those videos. And those are the edited ones. Yeah. They also spread, like, direct uh, shoots from their cell phones. Those aren't prestige cigarettes, are they? Yes. yes. Those are prestige cigarettes? Oh, my God. Let's see. <laughs> Vulgar tobacco in the frame. <laughs> Researching the past five years of Bulgar Tobacco's finances revealed a curious anomaly. Back in 2009, the Balkan tobacco giant showed a massive increase in exports. Curiously, at the same time, ISIS was gaining strength under the leadership of al-Baghdadi. This Pevsky in Bulgaria, he could ship in, say, truckloads of cigarettes off the books and have them shipped in. And then what, he gets cash under the table for doing that, and then in turn that helps finance ISIS? So for example, in Turkey it is really high. Mm -hmm. Maybe over 100%. Dang. Maybe a lot more. Mm -hmm. So like a package of cigarettes would be like four or five dollars in Turkey. Wow. Because of the tax. This is a party bus. It's like a disco. <laughs> party bus. Before heading back into Bulgaria, Mila bought us a wishing lantern with hopes that it would fly ahead and bring us luck. He knows what he's doing. He's not even oh, doing good. Oh, oh, Kid to the rescue. What do you what do you do? Kid to the rescue. Kid to the rescue. Most Turkish people we spoke to knew very little about their ancient neighbors to the north, and yet the two countries share over five centuries of brutality and peace. With such a tragic history of manipulation by outsiders, I can only hope for the young members of our team that Bulgaria will eventually find security without the Eastern or Western superpowers. Bulgaria were, were under Turkish influence for 500 years, a little bit more. We grow up. The, the story that we have uh, studied at school made us very nationalistic and patriotic patriotical because 
this was the way how we survived these 500 years and we kept us as a nation. It's not a hate, we don't hate them. We just don't want to ex accept them here because we know this as a part of Muslims' uh, issues is to, what is the word, to, to make the others like them. First, of course, Bulgaria is a, a border for the uh, European Union. It's one. And second, of course, being a NATO member state, of course, Bulgaria is somehow a border uh, also for, uh, for Russia to stop, uh, stop Russia. So that, that's why I can understand this. Uh, first, uh, spe specific relations between Bulgaria and Turkey having in mind the huge Turkish minority in Bulgaria, which uh, is uh, well used by so-called uh, movement for uh, freedom and rights, which is, to my opinion, movement for uh, maintenance of corruption. As an American, visiting Turkey felt like a Middle Eastern neighborhood in New York. But crossing back into Bulgaria reminded me of just how far from home I really was. Well, the agenda is have a seat for a while in the Hilton. Have a seat for a while. Yeah, I'll and make the plan for tomorrow for the traveling. Mm -hmm. The next day, we went to one of Ascend's secret locations to see if we could get any more information on Bulgar Tabak. And uh, there was a signal, there was an alert that, uh, that the factory is working uh, illegally night time. A random customs inspection of the Bulgar Tabak facility exposed that the factory was illegally running around the clock, most likely manufacturing off-the-book cigarettes. Uh, Borisov, uh, using his power as a prime minister of the country, ordered Van Utanov to cancel immediately the a police action in the factory of uh, Misha de Beer. Unable to restore the $65 million lost in the Pevsky Bank takeover, the Dallas-based company Air Logistics was forced to file for bankruptcy, initiating an American-backed investigation that connected Bulgar Tabak and the communication giant Vivacom back to Pevsky and the Russian state bank VTB. Well, VTB held two call options for the Bulgar Tabak Holding and for Vivacom. One gave access to Bulgar Tabak to the Middle East market and the other gave access to telecommunications including strategic sector significance like NATO, communications, satellite information, airplane security. This allows Russia to participate and have control and finance certain segments from that revenue. Asen suggested that we go to the main Bulgar Tabak factory in a remote mountain town called Blagvigrad. What does VTB stand for? VTB is KGB. <laughs> Everything in, in Russia is controlled by KGB. The American-backed investigation done by attorney Zahari Tomov discovered that the Russian VTB's interest in Bulgar Tabak was twofold. One, maintain control over the manufacture and distribution of all their cigarette brands in the Middle East markets, including Syria, Iran, and Iraq, in direct violation of UN sanctions. And two, Russia would then use these profits to finance its long arm of regional control in the Middle East. After only a few minutes of snooping around, several security guards dressed in black began rushing towards our van. I had never used a bodyguard, but just the night before, a friend of mine operating a non-profit in Sofia insisted we use one of his men. Come on. We need you. When the men realized I was an American with a legally armed Bulgarian guard, they instantly backed down but they still insisted we leave. Time to go? I need to go. Yeah, go. Okay. So we'll be and then... I 
I googled the name iPod Security from the men's uniforms, and I discovered that they were the private security force for the Prime Minister of Bulgaria, Boyko Borisov. Nobody now believes into the institutions. You know, nobody trusts into the rule of law. Everybody knows that there is another way. The rules are just there, they're wishful. The, the, the laws and the rules are wishful thinking. And this destroys the whole fabric of the society. Asen told me that Bulgaria and the other countries that Russia seeks control over exist between the chief prosecutors. It's not a secret that uh, the prosecution of Bulgaria predominantly covered the illegal deals of, of mafia. As it just so happened, Putin's right-hand man, Chief Prosecutor Yuri Chaika, was recently spotted having undocumented meetings with the Chief Prosecutor of Bulgaria, Soter Satsarov. Putin uh, wants to uh, weaken the Europe, to weaken the United States, and he's trying to make Russia global power again. The famous Russian activist punk band, playfully named Pussy Riot, put out a music video titled Chaika, showing how the Russian prosecutor uses the power of Putin to destroy enemies and ensure success for family and comrades. With Russia, Turkey, and America all at Bulgaria's doorstep, it felt like there was a lot at stake. Well, okay guys, um, 12.30 I'm waiting you all in the lobby, ready with the luggage, with everything. The team was running on fumes, but the discovery that several countries could all be controlled by a single prosecutor might be the breakthrough I've been searching for. Through a series of Ascend's connections, we were able to get a few minutes with an insider whose life is dedicated to exposing this fraud. First of all, I mean, do you do you feel like this this system of corruption has this has this leaked in from another country? I mean, has, is this is this type of, of of way of controlling people through the prosecution? I mean, is this a Bulgarian invention or is this a Russian invention or is this a, a mafia invention? Who invented this form of blackmailing through the prosecution office? Кърговете, които са известни от бившата държавна сигурност, те си разпределили държавата, те са парцелирали. И когато има важен момент за взимане на решение, в момента в който се разпределят милиардите от Европейския съюз, на тези хора им е необходима действаща съдебна система, защото може да се хванат в корупция, в източване на тези средства. Тези фондове, които се разпределят от Европейския съюз, те не се разпределят за производство. България не се създават мощности, които да се произвеждат, да се създават производствени мощности. Ние произвеждаме магистрали и си боедисваме къщите, това нареченото саниране. On April 15th, 2016, over 11.5 million documents were leaked from one of the world's largest law firms, located in Panama, with offices all over the globe. The documents contain secret attorney-client information for over 200,000 offshore entities. This data dump has become known as the Panama Papers. Inside the Panama Papers, Asen and his team of investigators found irrefutable evidence of Pevsky being used to siphon money from the EU via Bulgaria, ultimately moving it to offshore accounts connecting back to the ghost-like Soviet KGB network. But what do you do with this evidence? Who do you give it to? Anonymous sources investigating global fraud and money laundering rumor that when the money trail leads to Bulgaria, they simply give up. It's a waste of time. VTB has had a uh, total uh, bank in America and they uh, sold this to the managers. When the management buy out, I'm sure that this was a hidden deal, hidden transaction just to keep them uh, out of the sanctions. The Panama Papers also aided the American investigation, linking VTB's interest in the Vivacom Group telecommunications company, with access into all cell phones and internet traffic. This also gave them control over the radio frequencies and telecommunications for military, diplomatic, civil, and commercial aircrafts and satellites, all supposedly operating inside a NATO state. Russia also gained back control over 850 radio frequency broadcasting towers and the Plana satellite station covering most of Africa it had lost at the fall of communism.
The time I spent with Jordan caused me to share in his pain and contempt for the corrupt government threatening the future of his children. But Jordan wasn't the kind of guy to give up without a fight, and I respected the fact that he wasn't afraid to go up against the gangsters holding his country hostage. Actually, I was one of the organizers for the, for the meeting with Monica McAvoy because this Justice for All organized this. Right. Jordan is an amazing person. <laughs> he looks me like the father of Despicable Me. I like him because he's crazy and if some situation is normal, he can make the situation unnormal. Later that day, he brought us to the steps of the chief prosecutor's office to meet the leader of the protest network, an attorney named Nikolai Stoikov, who had also dedicated his life to dismantling the old Soviet-style trade network. Tomorrow there, um, there is going to be an uh, announcement of the European Commission on the mid-term monitoring report on the progress of Bulgaria in the, in the legal system and fight against corruption. That's why it's so important, this event now, and that's why the anti-campaign against him, because if we have a protest against the prosecutor, and if there is a negative report tomorrow, somebody here is going to be shaken. The over 2.3 billion euro lost in the CCB crash wasn't only corporations. There were nearly 8,000 private Bulgarian citizens whose life savings also vanished. With no one to turn to, thousands of citizens took to the streets. One slogan, Who is the other fat man? showed the chief prosecutor inside Pevsky's shadow. Later that day, yet another report came out citing Bulgaria as the most corrupt country in Europe. I came here with the intention of shedding light on the Russian meddling going on back in the States. But the frustration of these people's situation was really starting to get me depressed. Can you hear? Don't need to watch me. Hello. Hello. Oh my god, this is so fun! Hey Tony. This is awesome! Are you on your new computer? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is the first Skype ever. At dinner, the young Roma girl Tani Skyped us. I was so excited until I learned that she was calling from a pawn shop to say that her parents were selling her computer to buy tickets for a carnival. The next day, we headed back to the Roma village with the intention of getting Tani's computer out of Hawk. I don't know how I didn't the Skype connection. The Skype conversation. I haven't slept all night after that Skype call. I'm sorry. 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 Doing anything in Bulgaria requires permission from one of the many ministries left behind by the Soviet Union. I don't want it to look like it's no, just it's written. I want it to be like we just copy it from somewhere and paste it to them, right? Okay. Back when we gave Tani a laptop computer, she promised us that she would stay in school. But the reality of their lives often put simple things like finding food ahead of an education. We have been trying to get Tani to learn just a little basic English in hopes that one day she could visit America. With several failed attempts at hiring tutors and private teachers, it was frustrating to learn that there was an English class in Tani's school, but she wasn't in it. What about, uh, happy birthday to you? Alright, to you. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. <laughs> We've been trying to 
help this one girl here, uh, Tawny, who we've been following for a while. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, we're, we started off trying to teach her English, and, and to be honest with you, it just hasn't gone so well. Okay. And it's disappointing to me to come here and see that she's not even in your class. You know? uh, Is it too late to get Tawny into this class? No. No. What should we do? It's never too late. So what made you want to be in a Roma school? Um, <laughs> reality. I don't want to live in a pink bubble. It's said that the only future occupation guaranteed to the young Roma children is that of pimp or prostitute. So in hopes of inspiring a few kids to stay in school, Jordan was able to contact a young Roma man who also grew up in a poor village, but was now a renowned medical doctor. Tashko told us that if he couldn't find work, his wife would have to become a prostitute. And Tani could possibly follow right behind. Somebody, a man is forced to give his wife uh, for money. For example, if some, uh, for example, it may happen even to Tony, you know, it, uh, when she becomes 22 or 2022, 20, if she has two kids and she could not feed up the kids, she may be forced to go abroad and, you know, do it so, for financial reasons. Do you like what you're hearing? Say what you think. Do you feel good? Do you feel good? Do you feel bad? Do you understand what I'm saying? No. Because if I don't know what I'm saying, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not happy about, it, about this because if my, fa if my uh, mother becomes a prostitute, the kids, uh, they, will play, uh, they will play jokes with me. Don't cry. Tashko said he wanted to open a coffee shop in the village. Hoping to keep Tani out of the Brides Mart, we made a small donation. Hoping to see the big picture of how post-Cold War Russia exerts its control over other countries, I contacted an associate, Robert Steele, who had been a longtime intelligence officer for the CIA. After several trials and tribulations, he was able to get us a brief meeting with a former KGB agent and four-star Russian general, Oleg Kalugin. Soviet system is now over. What's Putin built his system on? On KGB, number one, no Communist Party. On Russian Orthodox Church, which has been completely under control and guidance of the KGB. And uh, on Russian business, but only that par part of business which complies with the KGB uh, wishes. What did you mean when you said that uh, the Bulgarians were the most kindred to the Russian mindset? After the war, the communists took over all of Eastern Europe. 
and um, the regime in Bulgaria was perhaps the most stable and most loyal. The Bulgarians had everything they needed to rid their country of the criminals. But the problem was that the top protest leaders stopped communicating with each other after the fallout from the massive 2014 protest. I needed a way to somehow get them all back together just one more time and perhaps spark a protest that couldn't be stopped. Back in 2012, an all-girl punk band called Pussy Riot staged a protest against Putin by performing on the altar of Moscow's Cathedral of Christ the Savior. The lead singer Nadia and her collaborators were sentenced to two years of hard labor in a Siberian prison camp. However, the silver lining to the story was the massive global fame that came to them, and a kind of title of being some of the greatest protesters of all time. Не могу сказать, как пусть Рай переводится на русский, может быть, вы подскажете. Граждане эти навязали общественному мнению вот свое название и заставили всех вас произносить его вслух. Ведь это неприлично. Did you hear about the, the, the girl band Pussy Riot that, that staged that oh, yeah. protest and all that? Well, I, I think the, these young ladies Pussy Riot, they just wanted to uh, just draw attention to themselves. But was it the church that pressured Putin into locking them up for two years? I think the church uh, simply made a decision to let them go instead of building up tensions, you know. Let them go, I mean, that's, uh, that's the best way. I, that's how I would myself handle the case. <laughs> but they spent, but Nadja and, and the other girls spent two years in prison. Oh yeah, so after all that, because they were just hooligans, as they say, I mean. Yeah. Uh, Wandering around inside the Russian embassy, I felt like a kid in some sort of evil candy store. I didn't want to leave. But being here gave me an idea. <laughs> really? I'd love to have a party here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the two main protest leaders who represented completely different factions had a huge falling out after the 2014 protests and swore they would never work together again. However, if we wanted to trigger a truly huge protest, it was imperative they bury their Bulgarian hatchet and join forces again. My plan was simple. Invite each one of them separately to meet with the members of Pussy Riot while excluding the fact the other would be there. With Pussy Riot as the bait, how could it fail? <laughs> Pussy Riot's trademark move was concealing their identities by wearing brightly colored ski masks called balakalavas. We met with a protester who had recently been arrested for mimicking Pussy Riot by painting the heads of the Soviet war monuments. Because when communists came in Bulgaria, they started their rule by demolishing churches, schools, and former monuments to Bulgarian army. They wanted to catch us on the spot while we were doing it. We were able to contact Peter Vrsilov, the lead singer's husband and group's manager, who agreed to come to Sofia with Nadja and one of the other members of the band. It's going to be Moscow for sure. I'll okay. say uh, like 100% details tomorrow. It's pretty much Moscow. So uh, basically I'm going to take the same flight as Barbara. With Pussy Riot en route, we went to see some of the monuments that were pissing everybody off. Okay. This one is for the Bulgarian uh, members of the Communist Party. They were worked and lived in Sofia and were dead in the fight against the fascism. Seeing these Soviet war monuments still standing in the sovereign nation of Bulgaria reminded me of the controversy back home over the Confederate statues from the American Civil War. This gave me an idea. What if we leaked a rumor to the media that Pussy Riot was going to stage a trademark action at the Soviet war monument? Hopefully it would cause a tidal wave of attention, thereby reuniting the protesters and perhaps injecting them with Pussy Riot's punk spirit. There was just one problem. The statues' heads were way too big for store-bought balakalavas. With Pussy Riot arriving in a matter of hours, we found the only open store in Sofia that had colored material and stayed up all night cutting holes in 20 new dresses. Can you hear my voice? <laughs>
Before the Russian punk rockers arrived, I felt it was my patriotic duty to teach the Bulgarians the correct history of punk rock. You want you some want action? I'll put, put your, your ass, ass in traction. 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 You want some action? I'll put your ass in traction. I was a punk before you. You were a punk. I was a punk before you. I was a punk before you were a punk. I was a punk before you. Я поздравит и, наверно, оставит нам подарок 500 эскимов. А я играю на гармошке у прохожих на виду. Как жаленье, день рождения, только раз в году. Миллионы, миллионы, миллионы алых роз Из окна, из окна, из окна, видишь ты Кто влюблен, кто влюблен, кто влюблен и всерьез Твою жизнь для тебя превратил Цветы, йоу! Don't ask me about the pig. <laughs> no questions about the pig. <laughs> okay, I promise. <laughs> What's that pig? <laughs> you promised me <laughs> not to ask about the pig. What, what's the name of the pig? It's just uh, it's just guy who owns your media here. Who what? Own your media. Pesky. <laughs> I I didn't understand actually. Pesky. Oh wow. Yes. Can you say it again? It's Pesky. <laughs> do, do you know who is he? And how he own your media <laughs> here. <laughs> The next day, our plan fell into full effect when the two rivaling leaders sat together and broke bread. If this didn't spark a protest, I was fresh out of ideas. But uh, we kind of belong to the same road movement. I may not agree with uh, Ivaiwo on his leftist positions. I may not agree with the things somebody told me he has put in his book, which I haven't had the time to read. But <laughs> Uh, we, we, we are on the same side. Uh, are, we? are we? Are we? We are against are we? Putin. Uh, if you are in the sight of the people, okay. <laughs> Getting the media's attention sealed the deal, and a new plan was hatched to surround Parliament during their next session. This is an uh, authority problem, and we are uh, raging against it. With the protesters surrounding the parliament building, pressure inside to expose the former Soviet network came to a boil. That was until Pevsky made a surprise appearance reminding everyone who they really worked for. I In a last-ditch effort at damage control, Boyko called an emergency press conference. Numerous attempts at interviewing Pevsky, Boyko, and the American Embassy went totally ignored. But with many of the key players inside the Parliament building, the thousands of bank crash victims and other law-abiding citizens 
we're going to force them to listen, one way or the other. I don't know if I will brave, but I'm very angry. I, I will become more and more angry. It's almost a state of anarchy here. Everyone can do whatever one wants. Um, judges, especially their good judges, are they're pressed by, by their attorneys and by higher higher position judge, judges to well to to decide trials not right by the law, but according to the interests of this or other mafia group. So we, we badly need a judicial reform. We need to replace the Attorney General. We need to replace the Prime Minister. Is the, the mafia boss, the mob boss. I think it was a runaway success. You know, they, with very short sentences, they said everything that we are trying to communicate for a very long time. So I think it was a success. When I first met Jordan, he was already an activist. But I'd like to think that a little of my American rebel spirit wore off on him. I could imagine now the 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 article and the magazine into the magazines, you know, another American, you know, uh, production, another manipulation <laughs> and stuff. But you still pretty normal. But you're willing to take the risk. I'm taking the risk. I have already took the risk. In the summer of 2017, Svetan's daughter was arrested at the Belgrade airport. However, it was quickly discovered that Bulgarian officials had manipulated the Interpol system for political revenge. Hello, my name is Radusleta Vasileva. I am a legal scholar whose family has unfortunately been subjected to unprecedented abuse by the government of Bulgaria just because my father exposed corruption on a massive scale. My father recently filed an application under the U.S. Magnitsky Act and I started a petition in support of his application. Back in 2009, a Russian accountant and lawyer named Sergei Magnitsky was tortured to death in prison after uncovering a $230 million tax fraud directly linked to Putin. Putin is the richest man in the world. I would estimate he's worth $200 billion and much, much of that money is held by nominees offshore and that money will eventually be frozen under the Magnitsky Act if he ever loses his power as president of Russia. In 2016, Congress enacted the Global Magnitsky Act, allowing the U.S. government to sanction foreign officials implicated in human rights abuses anywhere in the world, including Russia. There, 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 were, there were two, uh, effectively, agents of the Russian government who went to Donald Trump Jr. and said, um, can, can you help us withdraw this act if your father gets elected president? We, we know what the, the Magnitsky Act was. I'd never even heard of it before you know, that day. In November of 2017, Satan Vasilov hired an American law firm in hopes of placing criminal sanctions against Pevsky through the U.S. Magnitsky Act. There is no way to open an investigation uh, against Pevsky in Bulgaria. He is completely covered by the prosecution by all, uh, all institutions in Bulgaria. Placing officials like Pevsky into key positions is something that all mafias and governments engage in. But what I discovered is that Bulgaria is a small copy of Russia, with the same wild privatization benefiting the communist and KGB industrial complex. A type of genesis of oligarchs, formed from a carbon copy of old Communist Party appointees, fully in control of the judicial system, election outcomes, and most importantly, money and power. That's why uh, we're trying to find American angle and American jurisdiction to go after uh, this uh, gangster. The US-based lawsuit against Pevsky accuses the oligarch and VTB bank of using American money to take control over Bogartabak, Vivacom, and over a hundred weapons manufacturers supplying the Middle East. And in terms of the 
bigger picture, if there were crimes that were committed that allow the reach of the United States to bring justice, that is especially welcome. Many Americans forget that over 20 million Russians died in order to defeat the Nazis. And when the Soviet Union fell, it put a permanent scar on Russia. So it shouldn't be shocking to the West that Putin's success will ultimately be measured by his restoration of the Great Empire. The Cold War may have ended, but the war on basic freedom, democracy, and rights continues. And generations, one after another, statesmen were trying to make us believe that we're a zero. We are stupid, we are without our power, we are without beliefs, we are without hope, we are without future. Just let's stop thinking we have to lie, we have to ask for more money, just let, let, let's live with open hearts and as a better people. Mm -hmm. And I believe then in Bulgaria, will, a miracle will happen. Before heading back to America, we had one last stop. We had given our Roma friend Tashko a little financial help to build the first of its kind gypsy coffee shop. A few members of the crew wagered me that the gypsies probably used the money for something else. But I had to have faith. Obviously, many of the richest people in Bulgaria were not honest. But I was hoping that maybe, just maybe, some of the poorest were. Tosco and the coffee shop. Pff, it's crazy. I don't expect this because this is Tosco. And when Kevin uh, support his coffee, the next day he uploaded a picture how he drinking whiskey with his family. The previously day they, they don't have money to buy a bread. And the other day they drink whiskey. What the? Yeah. What if like it was just an amazing coffee shop we pulled up and we were like all just like damn <laughs> we all ate our like, words. Huge, like beautiful sign, big entrance. Is it crazy? Tushka. Is this the coffee Is that shop? What? Oh my god! What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. That can't. Like a coffee shop. Are they staging this for us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate theatrical performance. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Inside. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, check it out. Awesome. Oh, man. Is this? I go to give me? I told you. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is amazing. This is great. I'm totally impressed. Комшити тук идват, взимат кафе и се прибират, разбираш ли? So the neighbors come from time to time. Yeah. Млади момчета идват, 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 играят карти, марти, това. To how's business? Business. Like a business, a business, a business. Побил. Yeah? Better. Yeah. This place is making millions, come on. Yes. Заповядай. Газ. Sugar? Do you want sugar? Загар сложи ли? Bueno. Bueno. Good. It's good. I also, you know, bought the money that you gave me. This is the cable for the electricity. And the biggest one. Alcohol. Because I bought it. Because I bought it. How many meters? How many meters? About 100, 120. About 100 meters. So you're just feeding electricity to some other building or taking it from another building? He's taking it from some other building. That's awesome. Look at this. On the right. Wow. Come with your shoes. <laughs> you uh, what's your name? Paul. My my name is Tony. I am thirteen. My bro oh, yeah, yeah, good. I'm from Bulgaria. Nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bye. Mila, can you help with the door? Mila. Mila, can you help with the big door? Yeah. Thanks, girl. 
I came to this tiny country with the expectation of finding a total breakdown in society. But with all the hatred and discourse going on back in the States, I realized that whatever it was that Bulgarian had been through had also created a lasting sense of unity and values that seemed to circumvent politics and money. I found a famous Bulgarian quote. Translated, it says, The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now.